This O Steve comes to us from E. Simon. Two of the best black detectives in history, Will Somerset and John Shaft, are stumped over a missing persons case. So they ask a colleague for help. Shaft calls Axel Foley. After looking at the crime scene, Axel, did you look in the box in the corner? Somerset says, I don't f with boxes anymore. And you know, like I know, it might be a head in the box, Shaft says. I like head in box. I'm opening this one. Shaft opens the box and reads a piece of paper with the words, Ho Evitz. Axel says, you big black trench coat in the middle of summer dyslexic ass. Dyslexic ass. That ain't no Ho Evitz. It says, oh, Steve. Spears and Steinberg. You know what the f it is? Aries and Andy. You and a jerk. You know it's time to get this work. The real raw, gutter, uncut coat. No political corrections. Always sleep. Being awoke. We discuss politics and jokes. Cry, we lick. There's levels to this Before you was on your mama. Mary Spears don't give a fuck. We talk about race a lot, racism. Much love to my loyal bag holders. Rollers, loaders. We got them in the folders. The whole world on our shoulders. Spears and Steinberg. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Because it's just like it's backwards. But the reason I laughed is because of your Eddie Murphy. That's what made it. Oh, so dyslexic. So it's backwards. Oh, Evans is the, oh. All right. Now, you know what? Listen, if I truly understood that, I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I just didn't get it because of the dyslexic thing. But your your laugh made put it together. Oh, okay. And I, yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, E. Simon. Simon, you know, Simon E. Simon E. That's, that's dyslexic. Ah, twice I fumbled. <laughs> uh, okay, you know what? I'm going to get right to it because there's some... People that I think are not happy with me. Uh, Mark Marino, episode 614. Aries doesn't give a fuck about us. Big sigh. I understand the desire to stand on a hill, but that one is a dumb one to die on. Ben Carson, if you took the time to actually educate yourself, Aries, had many great ideas and was an excellent candidate. You could have wrote him in with your vote in 2016, but I bet you voted for the white woman Hillary. Let me stop there. Two things. Number one, I didn't vote for Hillary. Number two, I don't know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. One of the things Ben Carson said was that slavery was good for black people. The end. I don't, I don't know about that. Yeah. So that your whole point can now suck my. D like I said. Um, I, and I and, and when and again when Andy pointed this out to me, I, I'm 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 absolutely agreeing with him. If someone on the right truly has good ideas for black people that could help us, I don't care right, left, up, down. I would vote for him. But it just seems like all the black men on the right got their tap shoes on, and I'm not supporting that. Now let me finish, Ben Carson. You kidding me? That shoe shining. Uh, Andy did a fine job to keep you honest, but you were astoundingly, astoundingly full of. Shit. You're voting for Harris merely because she looks like you. Well, what about Dr. Cornell West, who is currently running for president? Is he? Yeah, he is. He's on. He's an independent candidate. He ain't got no shot. Damn, I ain't got no shot. I didn't even know he was running. So yeah, hmm. uh, he's certainly a better candidate. And the career politician whose career in politics began with breaking the law. I guess getting into specifics and facts don't matter because you choose to be ignorant in this matter, so I'll stop. Well, thank you for stopping. You don't give a fuck about us because we don't pay your mortgage. I'm certainly not blessed with a talent such as yours that has allowed you to live a relatively cushy life, one where you get to cry about not being bigger in the entertainment industry, and then he gives me an eye roll emoji. Uh, but we little peasants do, in fact, pay your mortgage. We diehard fans who have listened since day one because we are fans of your comedy long before the podcast do pay your mortgage because we take our hard-earned living, uh, buy tickets, pay for your water, pay for watered-down drinks, drive two hours to watch you every time you come to a city near us. I get it. We're all entitled to an opinion. But don't shit on us because Andy called you out on your Respectfully, a loyal fan 
that'll buy two tickets, pay for drinks, book a babysitter, and drive two hours out to see you in Ontario come November. Well, then bring your ass and leave the rest of that to yourself. Bring your ass. I'll even give you two tickets and buy you a drink, motherfucker. Are you gloating right now? No, I'm not gloating at all. But I do like that he, he did say, he just wants you to know that the people who support you, support you. They're diehards. And that when, when, when I said, you know, I'm not asking you to do, say this for me. I'm asking you because the people out there, the people that are your fans, are listening to you and they want, they want it from you. And you, you neglected that. But, you know, it, it still st- seems to be this thing. Where if my ideals and my reasoning and my politics don't align with yours, why am I not allowed to have it for whatever reason? I want to have it. You can have it, but you, but I kept saying to you, it's not. I'm not. I, I said I understood what you're saying, but I'm not asking you for me. And you go, who are you asking for? I go for them because they deserve to have your. If they're like you said, if they're diehards, they're willing to do everything. They die on this hill with you. They just, they just want to hear it from you. That's it. That's what that, that was my point. They may take our lives, but they won't take our freedom. And and I, I think that he I think he has a valid point, but I think the other thing that he has to that he has to understand though also is that uh, and this is what people get mad at me about because mm-hmm. I, I, I I go ahead and put on both people's shoes. I understand your point, uh, uh, Nate. I understand your point. Completely. No, it wasn't Nate. It was, it was uh, already, I somebody, already deleted. You already. It. I'm sorry. Uh, I understood your point. I apologize. I didn't get the name. I didn't. I didn't hear what he who your name when he I said. I think it was Mike Marino. Okay, Mr. Marino. Uh, I, I understood your point, I, and I just said to him what your point was, and I, I put on your shoes and I explained how I felt you, you, to convey what you just said. But Aries' point is, he's in a heated conversation at the moment, and it could have felt to him like I was using the audience against him, and that's his his reply because he was a little heated, that that's what came out. So it wasn't necessarily against the people who listen and, and, and are there with them. And I think you understood that. That's why you were willing to write, the, uh, write in an email. So this is what I do, uh, whether people like it or not. I, I, try to, I try to see everybody's point of view. I understand both of your points of view. I wasn't, I wasn't, I really did understand it. I was trying to get you to, to relay that to the audience because I do think that they're integral and that's why we, we do the podcast. Heated. Not heated, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't give a f- about the people. <laughs> I, was, I meant that shit. Uh, and dude, like I'm telling you, I, 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 my spider sense is telling me, because I, I do remember hearing that. Ben Carson said, yo, slavery was good for black people. And you want me to be for that? No. Oh, I, Andy's about to look it up. Yeah, it could take an hour, so keep going. Uh, Nate Oliver, start from zero. Now we're 300 plus. Did Ben Carson say slavery was good for black people? You Siri in it? Yeah. Please be right. Please Carson be right. has a long history refer, uh, referencing slaves as immigrants. Slaves were ripped from their home. Oh, he called them immigrants. I think that's the problem. Ah, but no, no. There's first I remarks. I'm, I'm going to the New York Times. That's They, they will definitely uh, watch this. Because he's not conservative. Did Ben Carson say slavery was good for black people? That's exactly what I just did. I found this on the web. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. <laughs> then we got a rough start on Monday. Deserves free speech. Part 40 minutes address. Carson turns attention to slavery after describing photographs of poor immigrants displayed on Ellis Island. As mentioned before, uh, land of immigrants. Why, why wouldn't they just say it? Because I don't. I, I think that that is basically someone probably uh, paraphrased what he said, and that's what they came up with because it doesn't say that. That's yet. what they came up with, or that's what he said. That's what they put it in to how he's. That's how they took what he said. Comparison first reported USA because I think if you the way I asked the question was exactly did Ben Carson say that, and that did not come up. That's probably white folks changing history. Mister <laughs> <laughs> turned his attention, but. We'll find it. 
But some black people, I, 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 listen, I don't know. But, and I don't know what the quote is, and I don't really know what Ben Carson said. So I, I'm not going to get into that. But some black people are immigrants. Some people did immigrate. Immigrant I know immigrants. From, from... But was he talking about slaves? Is what you're saying is that you heard him say slaves. I think that quote was attached to him. Okay. Um, hello, Spanish Jew in New York, Jordan. I like that. I like that. First time emailer. Oh, Steve. Do what you got to do, man. Uh, first time emailer started uh, from your snowfall episode. Had to go back and catch up, uh, and catch up and from episode. That's a ten dollar a lot of money. Had to catch up uh, from episode one. Quick question for you both: Do you believe that the stars are chosen by those in charge in Hollywood? The reason I ask: Both you and that hand ass wiping Jew need a sitcom on Netflix, Tubi, or even Pornhub. Doing the Effie Tower. Oh, Devil I, Tower. <laughs> with one of the other badge holders. That'd be a funny t-shirt. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> yeah, we gotta have the cheesesteaks. Um, when someone does something stupid, I say, Matt Dono. When someone commends me, I yell, I'm a genius. You should have a favorite episode episode. My top two is Andy's mom saying and Andy almost saying uh, bookends. The almost in the completion. <laughs> it was a pass that I threw her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> she finished that. Uh, Andy, you are invited to the cookout. Aries, don't eat any broken chicken bones in Baltimore. Keep us laughing. Hopefully no $10 a lot of money because all I want to be is a success like magic. Well, you were unsuccessful <laughs> earlier, uh, but thank you, Nate. No, he said it like magic might have. Uh, Success. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, when you said he wasn't earlier, when he oh, when he oh, misspoke, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, we should do a best? I mean, we did a best of a long time ago, but we've we had better episodes. Right. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah. I, it wasn't done right. I really wanted to go all out and put together a powerhouse of uh, some really great. Moments. We should do that during the holidays so that we can take a, that holiday time off and go ahead and just reel that, throw that out there. Yeah, I would have to. I got to work closely with Steve on that. Uh, Junebug Spade. Oh, uh, hell no. Uh, what's up, fellas? It's been a minute since I've written in. Andy, congrats on the marriage. Damn, are you late to that party? It's all right. I wish you, uh, I wish you and your bride much success. Success, Magic Johnson voice. Uh, Aries, my man, I got a bone to pick with you. Huh? Uh, depending on what your answer is, your black card might get revoked. You stated the only musical you've enjoyed uh, was the most mayonnaise-filled raisin in the potato salad. No seasoning on the chicken musical grease. Oh, hell no. I'm glad you brought this up, brother. I'm glad you brought this up. Um, any black kid that grew up in the 70s, 80s, 90s watched the holy grail of black musicals, The Wiz. Yep. I, I saw some, uh, somebody else wrote that to me, You too. know, but I never thought of The Wiz as a musical. I thought it was a movie. Because the, the, the one with... with, with uh, Michael Jackson. Yeah, I thought it was a movie, but you know what? It is a musical, though. God damn it. Yeah. Don't revoke my card. I I sorry. Toby, be good. <laughs> <laughs> but but you, we 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 both missed that one. And I'm gonna tell you. Well, let me finish. Um um, damn, I fucked that up. Uh, and that was the you can't win. You can't get even, and you can't get out of the game. I love when Michael hit that last part. You can't get out. Oh. Of the game. That shit was dope. And as a kid, I think I said this before once upon a time ago in a lot of the early episodes, two of the scariest moments to me in The Wiz was uh, The Crows, because uh, that just scared me, and the subway station with the dude with the yeah. two, ooh, 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 and the motherfuckers come up, and the trash can got the teeth and went after the lion. Woo! Um... Please tell me you've watched it and enjoyed it. If not, I'm throwing the black fist signal in the sky <laughs> and bringing you to nigger court to put you on trial. <laughs> uh, I know damn well you don't. Have, that, there's a skit in that somewhere. No, no, that's not a skit. That's that's a uh, that's like an HBO Max series. Court, and you know who the judge is? Who's the judge? Paul Mooney. <laughs> Paul, goddamn Mooney. Dude, uh, 
And instead of a gavel, because it's Paul Mooney, he just takes a white guy by the hair and slams him on the bench. <laughs> I said, court is in session. Bow! And takes a white guy by the hair and just slams him down. Every time, order in the court, order in the court. Bang, bang, bang. Dude, I'm telling you, that is, that, that's, a, that's, and if you could use, you could do AI now. And you could, uh, you just have to buy the, the you got to pay Mooney's estate to use, yeah. use he could be really on on the bench. Yeah. Um, bring you in court to put you on trial. I know damn well you don't have Grease as a better musical over The Wiz. Andy, I'd like to know your thoughts on The Wiz as well. Be safe, fellas. Junebug Spade. Is oh, he, my God. It's coming up. Uh, the Wiz for me came at a great time in my life. Uh-huh. Right age. And see, I'm a little, I'm older than Aries by 10 years. So I got to really enjoy Michael Jackson as part of the Jacksons and then Michael Jackson. So yeah. to me, I've had a long relationship with, with, uh, with Michael Jackson. Slide some oil to me. Let it rip down my spine. Um, and it was great. And I don't, I don't, I'm not a musical fan either, but I can go with Grease. But uh, you know, you don't think about, I, I, I didn't think about Grease when you said it because I don't think about musicals. It's not my. I, I, I'm going to tell you the one I forgot that is, uh, you know, listen, if I had to do a top three, and it would only be top three because these are my three, but I kicked myself in the nuts for not remembering this Grease, The Wiz. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, that's. I, I was going to oh say that too. I, I, I went back and thought about it afterwards. Dude, let me tell you something. Uh, and again, I was kid, uh, but seeing that plant come to life when it was big, and I forget the 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 the, the R and B singer, the Otis Tubbs from the Four Tops, but he played the voice of the plant and yeah, sang. Yeah. Man, between Rick Moranis. And Steve, Steve Martin, Martin. as the and, dentist? And dentist, Bill Murray's cameo. And when that motherfucker got to singing that plant soulful, feed me Seymour, <laughs> feed me all night long. I, I was, oh God, that was one of the best. Uh, there's, there's not, a, it's not a musical. It, it doesn't have that much, but there's music in it. Yeah. Uh, a lot more than a regular mm-hmm. film, but tape heads. Oh, I never heard uh, that. It's, it, it's, uh, uh, Tim Robbins and John C- and Cusack, mm. and uh, it's a f- it's one of my favorite movies from the eighties. Mm. It's how I learned about Roscoe's Chicken. And you know, I, I I attempted, I attempted, I was bored, and it wasn't like I paid for it. It was on cable. I was scrolling when we were on the road. Did you turn the air down to ice? That's why I'm not sweating, dude. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Mr. Freeze. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, one day we were on the road, I'm channel surfing. I tried. I tried to watch Cats. I went, I'm not this and I turned it off. I, I can't. I, I've never watched Cats, but oh. there's a musical hair that's from uh, the late 70s, I think. It was it was a it was a Broadway John show. Travolta? No, no, no. It wasn't with John Travolta. It was Hair? With hair. But then you told me the movie. The hair. Yeah, the movie. Hair. He was in that. No, he's not. He's the girl. No, no, that's, that's a different a, movie. Oh. I'm talking about it. It's it's a musical. Oh. Hair the musical. It, it, that one I liked a lot. And that's the first time I watched the musical and I go, Oh, this is good. I like this. Right. But it's the only it, at that that time, other than the Wiz, which I didn't as a kid, I didn't think of the Wiz as a musical though either. I didn't. I, I thought it was like a Movie. It, it is, but it is a musical. Yeah, it is. Um, Ro- Roshan, Roshin, Roshan, Asia. I think it's Roshan. Musicals. Uh, fam, you didn't like Little Shop of Horrors in School Days? School Days was a musical? I didn't think School Days was a musical. Is it? A musical? Nah, I don't think so either. Um, there were some highlights of my childhood. Man, my dad got super hard when Gina was licking the head. Pause. Why you put a pause there? It was a woman to a man. There's no need for a pause there. Y'all be misusing pause, man. Yeah, I never thought of School Days as a musical. Uh, Aaron Lamar Robinson. Um, Garbage-ass Joker. Apparently, it was Joaquin Phoenix's idea to make it a musical, and he wanted DC... And he wanted DC to have no part in the movie. He apparently said, "You want to turn the air down? You want to turn no, it off?" No, no, it's okay. 
uh, uh, he apparently said it was a dream he had, so that's why he went the route they did. The shit was do do. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga got your dreams. Got your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> This, there's a story there, though. If you watch the story, it's not a bad story. It's it is it it is just not the Joker. But what I do like about this is then what are we watching then? But it, they they kill the Joker because they there's a, the real Joker is who comes up at the end, and I think that was kind of Joaquin Phoenix. Maybe that's his idea of killing off that that character because he is not the Joker. Mm. The Joker is yet to be born, and he he we see him at the end of this at the end of this. Mm. So I, I, I kind of get it. I mean, I get it. Did there you- was a story there <laughs> that I wanted to share. I feel homosexual. Pause. <laughs> That's the proper use of pause. <laughs> yo. Uh, I, I get I get it. I, I understand why people don't like it. I I. Sitting there, I was like, this is not what I... You know, it, it, it whether or not it had the story or not, it's not what we paid for. It's not what we were, we were anticipating. It's not what we were... I don't, don't want to be dipping into my popcorn bucket, getting butter on my fingertips while listening to people sing, man. Um, say Another one from Aaron Lamar Robinson, only because it's ridiculously short. Speedos. 90% of the people in Orlando are tourists from other countries. That's why they wear them weird-ass... Them weird ass wear speedos. Why they? Why? That's why them weird ass. Oh, that's why them weird ass wear them wear speedos. <clears throat> it's funny that you would put weird ass when all of them were white men. You know, there's black dudes that wear speedos. European uh, European black dudes wear speedos. I've never seen that. It's it's not unusual in Europe to wear speedos. But we specifically were talking about Orlando. Yeah, but. He was saying that the Europeans that are coming out right. here on vacation. And, and I know Europeans also do the, I see why a lot of white guys do, the satchel. I don't understand. The purse. And, and then they roll their cuffs near their ankles and their pants up. So you see a lot of ankle bone. A lot of gayness in Europe. Dude, that satchel thing. Yeah. It's in the hip hop community right now. That ain't my hip hop. <laughs> That's not my hip hop. That's this new generation. Dude, when you walk around New York and you, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got into it with one guy who was like, Aries, you stuck in the 90s, man. You used to be wearing 90s attire. Again, when did a fitted baseball cap and Timberlands become the 90s? That's all. That's normal wear. It's normal. I wear jeans, a t-shirt, a, a fitted Yankee and Tim's. But your jeans are baggy and you still wear butters. You you can you can you can change the colors now. You don't have to just stay with butter Tim's. Nah, I'm not yo fruity feet. <laughs> is, nah, Dude, I'm not, there's I'm black, not, there's uh, there's black look like you're committing crimes. There's alligator one looking I'm ones. I'm not no from Detroit. There's, I'm not wearing <laughs> alligator shoes. There's nigga. there's uh, there's just colors. You could do them different. You don't have to do exactly the same, you know. Some of those, some of them I'm are, at that age where I know my uniform and I, I wear my uniform. You know, you know what the problem with the uniform is? What do you really want me to tell you? What are you gonna because I don't want you to be upset about what I'm about to say? Go ahead. People get a uniform uh-huh. and they take it from where they feel that their best moment in their lives have been mm-hmm. and they don't see their life being better, so they stay with the uniform from the best moment. Because if you believe your best moment is yet to come, you're going to move to what's yet to come. You're not going to stay in your old moment. You're not going to stay with your old uniform. My best moments come to me. I don't go to it. Okay. Well, they still are coming. So you can... you can Pause. You can still keep going. Right. You don't have to stay... Dude, I wish I could find the clip. God, I wish I could find this clip. Because me saying it ain't going to do it justice. You have to hear it. You got to feel the energy. <laughs> but there was a time when I... Tommy Davidson was on the Breakfast Club promoting his show in, I guess, New York or Jersey. And he had a friend with him who had this foundation. So they won the Breakfast Club, and it, it, it was like a rant where the dude was describing the foundation, but he was doing a lot of, you know, it's and we have a, this many men in the organization. We want as many men as possible to come. We love when men come to the organization. It's all about coming, coming, coming. And he kept saying come and men and come. And, and uh, uh, Charlemagne goes, pause, god damn! 
<laughs> oh, God, the way he said that shit had me dying. Uh, okay. I got a better way to say it then. Here, here you run. If you wear your throwback every day, it's mm-hmm. not a throwback. It's your daily. Right. You, you, you're wearing your throwbacks every day. What's wrong with that? You know, you, there's, there's still today. You know, it's not a break, break in case of emergency. I am the emergency. Dude, you know, you could get a new pair of jeans. Like, not What's a, wrong with the jeans I got? The baggies. As opposed to what? Spandex denim? No, but uh, normal size. So, normal. What's normal? Not just normal, like normal cut. Nah, son. Those are baggy. Yeah, I need room, nigga. <laughs> Those are hammer pants. Nah, they ain't quite that. <laughs> they ain't quite that. They ain't Z Cavariches, nigga. <laughs> Jabos. Jabos. Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oh, okay, this is the one. Yeah, right. Ronald Williams. Oh, here he come. Watch out, girls. He'll beat you up. Oh, here he come. He's a woman beater. He's mad with me. Let me let me put my hands up. He might try to hit me. Ari Spears is full of shit. <laughs> Got right to the point. What's up, A and A? Ari, you sound like a straight up sellout because you want to tell your daughter uh, you can be president of the United States. So if Harrison loses, you're gonna tell your daughter you can't be that because she didn't win. Wow. And you thought it was cool what Barack, uh, what Obama said to black men is the biggest fuck you to black men. If you were so if you were so I'm standing by my race, you talk shit about O.J. Simpson and he what's found not guilty in court. Now, you don't even have the right to talk to me uh, with, with this kind of articulation. You can't get your thoughts together first before you come out swinging. Otherwise, you end up hitting children and women. Well, you don't mind the women part. Uh, anyway, uh, O.J. Simpson and what he found not guilty in court, but you have said he killed that white woman. So I guess, Diddy, we as black people should stick by him no matter what. Andy, I give it to you. I don't understand why he was so emotional to you when all you were doing was calling him out on his. So if Trump wins, I'm going to tell my daughter you can't be because the black woman didn't win. Uh, And Aries, no disrespect because you will take this another way. Absolutely, I will. Uh, Like I told you, this my and this was far from that. First of all, dude, I know I'm joking, but you 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 all over the place and you're not making a coherent point. Um, whether Kamala wins or doesn't win, black people don't need permission to do anything, but it helps to have it in the books. It's a great look historically. It's a great look for our legacy and our history, given what our history has been. So yeah, if if she doesn't win, I'm still going to tell my daughter she can be the president of the United States, but how much more cachet does it have if it's actually been done? If the ceiling has actually been broken, you 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 accomplish two things. One, women have yet to break that ceiling, and a woman will have done it. But now it's twofold because a black woman will have done it. So that's twice the power. So yes, if Kamala doesn't win, I'm still gonna tell my daughter you can do it because one day, baby, it's gonna be done. But if Kamala does do it, now it's like not only did we get a a, a black female president. But it was a black woman who broke the goddamn mold. That's that's why not strive for what a powerful, important image that would be. Um, And secondly, I'm not standing behind a murderer. I believe OJ killed them motherfuckers. So so and and again, the OJ thing was bigger than OJ. I think secretly most black people know, yo, that did that. But the moment was bigger than OJ because it was about a black man beating the system. And OJ said himself, I'm not black, I'm OJ. OJ didn't identify with He stopped identifying with a long time ago. Surrounded himself with white friends, white women, no connection to the, to the black community. One of the biggest jokes was when he got acquitted, now he shows up at a black church putting on a daishiki. Please. So I'm, don't don't use OJ as an example. He's a murderer. Why well, I'm standing behind that? I stood behind the moment. Can I, a black man getting off. Can I can I can I white guy this for a second? Come to the cookout. I, I think that the bigger part of the moment is as you're saying, but the way that I, I I would like to say it is, as I saw it, I thought 
what the excitement in the black community was is that a black man finally got tr- a black man with money finally got treated like a white guy with yes. money. Yes. That's that yes. was that was that was the win. Yes. Not whether he ki- whether he killed her or didn't kill her. The idea But whether you believe he did or didn't. Th- that had nothing to do with the, ex- the the thing was that a black man was treated in the system the same way that a white guy with money would have been treated in right. the system. And power and fame. And white people got a chance to taste what we've been eating forever. So I think that that was, I thought that was the moment. So, uh, but I, that's, you know, sorry, I'll go back. I'll, I'll go back out the gates and uh, leave you to your cookout. No, nah, that's it. Uh, you know, uh, but yeah. So, but I, he, he does, uh, you, you see that this is a very, it's not, I think people want to see, I think in a moment like this, it's not just about, it affects people in a different way. It's not just about the moment that you're talking about, because I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a lot of moments that you you are not missing. You're missing because I know the president seems like the biggest position in the world. But how many? Do you know how many black CEOs are there? Are Fortune 500 companies? Does that make a difference to you? Because that's a that's a big deal. Those people make moves. And yeah, change. absolutely, it's a big deal. But do you do you know those people? Can do you know anybody to tell your daughter of, of what women have become? I mean, that's why I think people are looking at it that it's a little bit inge- disingenuous of you because it's just this one moment and this one person actually can affect how you I, live. I know, but historically, white people have been disingenuous for a long time. So why can't we have that same right? Because it doesn't necessarily, and this was my point, it doesn't necessarily help you because financially and the country you want to do well, it's not just it, because that benefits you at more than just why do, why, a why picture do, why of somebody. Why do black people always have to be the ones to be told, act right? That's like when people go, you know, when, when, when black people get upset when there's a police shooting and, and you know, the, the officials come out and say, uh, peace, this is a time of peace. Don't, don't, don't act crazy. Just, just, just be peaceful and, and suck this up and take it. And black people's point is, we're tired of taking it. We're tired of sucking it up. Don't tell us to be peaceful. Tell the cops to be peaceful. I, I think, but you're, you're relating two different things that I'm trying to say. No, I'm not. I'm simply saying to you that white people have historically always had the ability to do what they want for their reasons. But these are so white why people, can't I do that? These aren't white people writing into you, though. These are black people that are telling you, so, I want, I want to have, uh, I want my, I want to pay my mortgage right. I want to be able to move up in the world. I want to be able to have, be able to do, be successful. I don't want to vote for someone just because of her skin color and not be successful. I want it to be the right, as you said, you want the right uh, black man on the, on the right side uh, who, who would be a right, uh, a conservative, but you would want the right black woman to be able to do that as well, because you want to be successful. You want the country to do well because you want to be. And able. even when the right black man was trying to do right, the white system fought against him. Well, well, well no, well, because well, well, no, well. Well, again, because there's two different did sides. Mitch McConnell there's, not say, Andy, we, no, I don't want to go over this. I don't want to get in an argument. But he's a conservative. Oh, all right. The point being, the point being, yo, we're going to do everything we can. Did they fight Clinton the same way? Did they fight Is Clinton, Clinton black? No, but they fought him oh, the but, same well, way. Is what I'm trying why to are you brushing that under the rug? You, you, you see how you're brushing my point under the rug? No. No, you are, Andy, because I'm sitting here telling you that when you go, the right black man. Nice. That's noble. Good. But when we had the right black man trying to do things, he was being blocked because he was black. What I just tried to say to you, though, was he being blocked because he was black? That could be a very oh, major part of it. But he was also a Democrat. Let me give and you the that. Republican was let me give you that. Man. Let me give you that. He was a Democrat. So it's a Republican versus Democrat. I just gave you that. Now, if you're going to give me mine, part of it was because he was black. Then that's the issue. Let's not act like that's not an issue. But even even when Clinton was there and he was white, he Mitch McConnell was blocking him because their policies are opposing. You can't always Andy, just make it black and white. Okay, but Jesus Christ, you're, you're leaning on the. It, it can't just be black and white because it's about Republican and Democrat. That might be the case, but but to, but to, if there's any bit of a percentage of it because he's black, that's a problem if you put oil in my water i'm not drinking it i don't give a damn if it's a drop it's undrinkable now it's undrinkable i'll give you everything so stop acting like it's not an issue don't make one bigger than the other but it 
if he was doing the same to Clinton and that he was doing to Obama, how can you just make it about him being black? That's my Because question. we've had 40-something white presidents. So he, he should just go along with it because he's black and he should just go, he should be like the white guys that just go, I, I, All I, right. I, I you, you, he you're, shouldn't follow his you're, policy. You're, 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 the, uh, you're the politician, you're the governor, you're the mayor, you are the police chief that is telling me after the police shooting, be peaceful, to suck it up. That's what you're telling me. I don't mean that literal, but you, 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 you're basically telling me, hey, deal with it, B protest peacefully. And I'm telling you, I'm tired of that. I understand that. We've been doing that and we're still getting shot. But I'm not, I, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. Yes, you are. Yes, I'm saying. Yes, you are. You're playing was, both sides. No, I'm saying that McConnell was going to fight against the Democratic policies because that's what Obama was as, running as, as a Democratic as, policies. As, as Obama, another moment as he was giving up, well, I forget what they call it, but he's, in, what do they call that thing where the president's sitting there at the, at, the, at the podium and there's someone on his left, someone on the right. He's giving the address, the speech. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? You know what that's called? I, they, I, they always give that speech every time. But the guy yells out, liar! And everybody pointed to now, do you think that would happen to a white dude? You don't think that there was any they racial did it to Trump. They did it to Trump. They did do it to Trump. Yo, that liar? Yeah. I've never seen. Show me the footage. Go Look look at his addresses. They yelled at him every, when, he, every, when he was doing the, the State of the Union. All right. right? I'm going to pretend, I'm a pretend, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pretend to be what you say it but, is. But I want to say this to you because I want you to, I want to say this before. Trump is an anomaly. He's not, he wasn't. Trump, the reason I say he's an anomaly, he was coming from a different place, so people handled him differently than they did any anybody else. I'll say this. I, the reason I can't go with McConnell is because I know what he would have done with anybody, but when they start saying, I can't believe he had the audacity to wear a tan suit, that's built in racism. A lot of things were built in racism during his presidency. A lot of things. But a lot of other things were just policy, though, Aries. Okay. All right. So... Okay, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is where I don't have the wit and the articulation that I should to tear you down. Because what you're doing is insane to me. Like you're sitting there going, when it comes to racism and what we go through, there shouldn't be a but. And you keep going but. Well, it's not a but, it's also about policy. It's about because he's a Democrat. Okay, fine. It you, was his Democratic agenda that Mitch McConnell was fighting. You could say no, that no, nothing, was black. nothing racial at all. Nothing. I don't know what's in Mitch McConnell's okay. head. Do you know? I don't have to know, Andy. We know that when you go, we're not passing anything. The, the man hasn't even done anything yet, and you already prepared to shut him down. They did the same thing to Trump. They said we're but not. Trump is an anomaly. He is an anomaly. Did they do it to the other white presidents? Yeah, they fought. Every, everybody has right. fought policy. It just, okay, it's just in there. That's it then. They, 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 it, that's it then. They, they, it's just about policy. They, they, shot, it's, it's they shot Lincoln. It's Republican. They shot Lincoln. Okay, it's Republican Democrat. They shot Lincoln. All right. We, we, he was shot, right? Okay, Andy. I'm just saying. You win. You win. No, it's you not win. about winning. It's no, I know. I know. It's, but it's never about race. No, it's a, there's a butt with you. There's always a butt with you. We can make it always about race if you want to. But there's always Not if we policy. don't have to. Not if we don't have to. Okay, so if Mitch McConnell does what he's what he does, why do you why do you take it just to race? He's going to fight the Democrat no matter what. He fought he he, he okay. fought Clinton. Right. It's it's what he does. So the tan suit, we're gonna fight him on everything. The liar yell out comment, even that moment where uh, Barack had to have a sit down with the cop who thought that the black dude was was breaking into a house when really that was his own house. And I forget what documentary I watched, but even they pointed to that was like, are you serious? Like Obama almost has to be an apologist for a racist cop? Like it, it, it's, it's, all, it's all stewed in some Yeah, but that wasn't about the presidency. That was about, a, 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 he was a professor at the school. I, I right? know, but who's attached to all of this though? Yeah, race, Obama. But racism is over the board. We can always say that, there, that there's always going to be part of that. But his job is to be a Republican. Obama's job was to be the Democratic uh, president, and he was running Democratic policies. The Republicans are going to fight that. That's what they do. Okay. Okay. Curtis Singleton, Mr. McMahon. Yo, ANA, uh, I just got done listening to both Mr. McMahon pods. 
Uh, and as a wrestling fan, it was hard to listen to you guys' synopsis without wanting uh, to be involved to point out some discrepancies. Aries, your point on Tyson and Ali both being part of WrestleMania is a bit harsh when you realize that both men have gone on record multiple times stating that they grew up fans of the business, so being there was a win-win, especially for Mike, who got $3 million. Uh, there actually was that time and still today, a writing room, the former head writer, was actually in the dock. And as a fellow Patrice fan who loved wrestling, you may have forgotten that he at one point, no, I didn't forget it, I know. He was a one-time writer for the company for a short while and had some of the most entertaining stories about his time there. I recommended going back to listen to them, especially after watching this. I always enjoy you guys' take on anything Patrice. Vince definitely had final say, but not everything that was put out came from him. Again, I'm a lifelong fan, along, uh, although I did enjoy the doc. Listening to you guys made me realize a lot wasn't touched on, and if it were, and if it were, you'd have a different perspective. Keep killing it like always. Looking forward to seeing you guys in Philly. Listen, I know about Ali. He got his whole I'm beautiful, I'm pretty thing from Gorgeous George. So I know he was, that was his inspiration. So I know that. What I'm simply saying was that as a diehard boxing fan, I don't want to see them do anything that's not their trade. I don't, I don't want to see Mike. I know it's all theater, it's fun and games, but I don't want to see Mike in a ring unless he's got on the black trunks, the black shoes, no socks, the towel, and he's knocking him head into the nosebleed section. I don't want to see Mike pretend. I want to see Mike do what he does. I, I, you know, again, Ali was, was a little bit more playful. Uh, in terms of his personality and uh, suits better for 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 fun theater. Uh, but again, you know, I, I, I want to see Ali, you know, versus Cleveland Williams when he was at his most beautiful and poetic and did the Ali shuffle and, and knocked that 15 different ways to Sunday. I, I want to see that. I don't, I don't, for me, that's not a joy to go, look at Mike Tyson fake plan that I want him to be the dog he is bite him I I do understand to the wrestling community though to see Tyson in there that's that's a big moment mm -hmm. for people to have that come from outside I'm not a wrestling guy so what like I'm disappointed that I can't bring more to it uh to, to because I think there is as I said, I know guys that are really into wrestling and they grew up with it in a way that it's part of their life I mean it is it's integral to their to their existence, yeah. and they remember the moments. They remember what fight it was on the night of, and and that's just not what I have in me. But uh, yeah, it would be nice. I, write some more into it. I I think it. Uh, I find wrestling to be extremely in interesting and a huge like you like the theater of it is amazing. But it's it's a soap opera, man. Yeah, and I mean, again, if you take it for for that, and you, you know. And you enjoy that? I can understand how it's enjoyable to you. It's, but it's a physical soap opera. I'm not. Yeah, I'm, not yeah. I'm not putting down or demeaning anything that they do. But it's 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 a, there's a script there. Yeah. Uh, Solid Snake, <clears throat> Kevin, a fan. Hello, A and A. This is my first time writing to you guys on the podcast. Oh, I've listened to the pod all the time at work and on long trips. Aries, I would like to say that you are on my Mount Rushmore of favorite comedians like Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr, you, uh, your Theodore Roosevelt, um, and Patrice O'Neill. I don't know what he means when he says, you're th oh, I'm Theodore Roosevelt? I don't know if I know what that means. Uh, I've been a fan uh, pod listening to old episodes and new ones like eating a hot dog at both ends, no ditty. Uh, but the episode that finally made me want to write in was uh, episode 607, Stopping the Steal. Andy, oh, Andy, I will say I relate more to you than would have because I thought I would relate more with Aries because we're both fast-talking New Yorkers. But honestly, I've related more to you in the aspect of I honestly don't know where I belong sometimes being Mexican. Uh, anyway, uh, to make this, to not make this email too long, let's get into it. Uh, so many politicians have said and have done racist things in this country. This, uh, that is a fact, just like Trump. But this is where Trump failed as a leader and a president. After the assassination of John F. Kennedy, LBJ, the vice, uh, became president. Many people were scared because LBJ passed so many Jim Crow laws. But too many people 
But to many people's surprise, he just so happened to be one of the biggest advocates for civil rights in America, uh, even ending segregation in businesses and workplaces. Uh, the point is that LBJ, the point is, is that if LBJ was a racist and knew what he was doing once he realized that I'm not the American, I'm not the president of white or black America, I'm the president of America, he saw the bigger picture where Trump didn't. That's all I have to say on that, Andy. Don't say one thing, uh, say one thing, then backtrack. That's like telling Aries you are allergic to peanuts, eating them, and then arguing that you're not on the way to the hospital. Anyways, uh, keep the pod going and the uncut cocaine flowing. Hope you guys come back to Houston someday. Hey, Andy, tacos on me. Hermano, your fan, Kevin G. Yeah, I would like some tacos from Houston. We never had tacos from Houston? Yeah, I haven't had good tacos in Houston. Like, we went to some places. Is Houston but I, known for tacos? Texas has their style. Oh, that's right, that's right. Texas has their style. I'm not, and and it's Southern, so it's going to have more influences. But I, I, I haven't found, like, that no one's taking me to the good down home places mm -hmm. out there. Point me in the direction of Taco Bell and Del Taco. I'm good. Dude, I'm not I'm ever mad at Del Taco. <laughs> I know everybody gets upset, but I love Del Taco. I love a crunchy taco, and it, it, it works. Uh. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not, it, it, it suits the need. It's not the best taco, but it, 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 it does what it needs to do. Yeah. Uh, Ezra Vernado, Monsters docuseries. Hey, Aries and Andy, great review on the Monsters movie. I actually almost watched your review before I myself. I actually almost watched your review before I myself. Eric Menendez and his brother uh, want to give you uh, 10 shotgun shells <laughs> of a lot of money. <laughs> uh, was halfway through the series, but I decided to finish the series first, then watch y'all's review. Quick question, and in my opinion, I don't think the OJ scene was needed. I understand that case was going on during that era of time, but since they didn't expound on it, I felt it was wasted film time. What do you guys think about that? Was the quick little moments of OJ important enough to be in a series? I, I do. I do. Because that was a critical time uh, in, in, in 94. Um, and because of the OJ thing, they wanted blood, as they said in the series. So OJ getting off was almost, you know, part of the reason why you knew they were going to fry. So I, I just thought that was kind of necessary. Um, I, I, I think that just the fact that they had contact together is just interesting in the dynamics and the fact that they told him that he should take a plea. They, yeah. they were trying. And I think that that's... Uh, Speaks to like their their thought process after going through it as well. So, right. Uh, but but I guess to his point is was it necessary? Could you have told the same story without that that part? I guess you could have. I think that they wanted to, so they they created a little a little piece in there just for that. Right. Uh, it, it could have been told without it, but I I don't think it 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 took anything away from it, and it did give you some insight to what was going on in L.A. at the time. Yeah. Um, did you know, I'm sure you know, uh, there's a, a thing where they might get out. Yeah. Oh. They're reviewing it and they're, re you know, it, it's interesting too, because they said that, uh, it's called, uh, when you kill your parents or your mom or yeah, being matricide is what it's called. And, uh, they don't put people away like that anymore because they say, and there, there's some psych. I, we just, we just did this yesterday's episode, which is about psychos. So there's some psychos that I'm sure have uh, taken care of their parents. I know there's uh, one lady in particular that is, uh, is, is uh, was a killer that killed her, her parents. Um, but for the most part, it's done because of uh, abuse, uh, mental and physical abuse, um, or or that the, they're mentally ill. And since they know that and they show that and their family, the, the family is still saying that they were abused as kids. Yeah. So they have all that family support that's saying that. And they've been in jail for 34 years now, something like 34 years. Right. And they said that, that no other, that's the longest sentence that anybody's been given for this kind of crime because um, it's usually, you know, they, there's usually treatment. And yeah, maybe there's some, there's some jail time, but it's never been this long and that they have served their time. So mm -hmm. that's what they're thinking about actually releasing them. Mm -hmm. 
Um, JY, uh, help me please, podcast inquiry. Longtime listener of the Spears and Steinberg podcast, Aries responded to a couple of my emails before. I consider myself a faithful listener until I run into this issue. When or where are y'all, are you all pronounce, announcing next week's topics? I really would like to prepare and look at X, Y, and Z. I think this week's topic is the Menendez Brothers show, but I listened through the dates and on the podcast being read, but no idea of the next week topic help. Uh, you know, I wish we could do a better job of this, uh, cause, but, but, but we do it when we can. We, yeah, because sometimes we just don't know what we're going to discuss until the 25th hour. Uh, so by the time we've figured it out, the, uh, the, the governor is asleep and it's too late to, uh, pardon the execution, uh, and motherfucker's dead. Uh, you guys got to understand how we do this. I mean, you're watching this. This is, and some people complain we need better cameras. Listen, this is coming from the hotel. This is an iPad. It's a Zoom H6. It's two microphones. We carry this shit around in our suitcase and we set up every weekend to do this. Or uh, if we're not together, rarely when we're not together on the weekend, then we, we figure out some other way to do this. But this is this is as gorilla styled podcasting this could possibly be you see we got done. African animals in the back <laughs> this is the jungle yeah, the, the backdrop is wherever we're at that week uh, so it, it is it is uh, we do the best we can to make sure this comes out that's, that's but I will say this uh, and I'm looking forward to it I've been kind of uh, but I think I'm gonna call the guy I found his contact uh, and set up us set us up with a, my only fans because we've been talking about doing this thing where Andy and I do I think it's we should do like one episode a week, uh, maybe every two weeks, you know, like twice a month. Or what, start off once a month. Yeah, once a month, maybe. Uh, it's us and a bed behind us. And a bed behind us, and it's two chicks making out. I mean, strap-ons, dildos, lubes, <laughs> <laughs> sponsored by uh, Johnson & Johnson Baby Oil, a la Take That, Take That. Uh, you missed one. What? There's three. Oh, take that, take that, take that. Yeah, you he says it three that. times. Yeah, take that, take that, take that. Oh, you might be right. That's almost like a, a candy man. If you say take that three times, Diddy he shows, shows up. up. Yeah, and it's, like, <laughs> and it's, it's him covered in baby oil, like, uh, and he's just doing the Diddy dance. Take that, take that, take that. <laughs> uh, Diddy, he's oiled up. Uh, <laughs> so, you, so you don't like someone You're in the bathroom You just yell Take that, take that, take that Run out the door And turn off the light And then the, your dude's in there And then there's yeah. Diddy appears Yeah, and Diddy just appears <laughs> No shirt Oiled up Looking like a patent leather Jordan <laughs> um, Yeah, so we, we, we think about doing it My OnlyFans uh, And uh, You got a hold of that guy though? Huh? You got a hold of him? That guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, I know some porn stars, so I already asked uh, Kiara Mia, and she said she would do it and find another girl. Uh, and you know what? Listen, the episode don't need to be but 15 minutes to maybe a half hour. Dude, if we can do it a little longer than that, it's just so funny. But, but you, 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 you know, well, I don't want to over milk it. You want it to be just right, because, I mean, you know. No, but you, you know, they can take breaks, come join the pod. What do you guys think about this? And they, they, they. I, well, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. We'll think it through. Because in my head, I just thought, you know, I, I, what I thought was funny is if we don't pay too much attention to it. Yeah. Like they're not even there. And we carry on with whatever conversation we carry on yeah. with. And while you know, as serious as it may be, one girl is getting rammed in the ass with a strap on. And we hear some, uh, uh, but we never really call attention to what's going on over there. And what's the name of the podcast? I don't know yet. Take that, take that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> take that podcast. That might be. <laughs> might be. All right. Uh, so I hope I answered your question, JY, and all of that. But we, 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 we are trying to let people know uh, ahead of time as best as we can. Uh, <clears throat> thermal heat. Um, oh, no, that's a bit. Oh, save that one till next week. Gabatron 88. Uh, white people don't clean themselves on TikTok. Uh, Poor name. Uh, in Diana's Holes and the Temple of Poon. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Yeah. Uh, with Harry Ass Schlong. 
So you're supposed to say the, the, uh, Harrison Ford? Yeah. And uh, Short Pound. I like Short Pound. Yeah. Dr. Jones! Dr. Jones! Uh, that's so f- I don't know why, but I just thought that was so racist. What? It's not, but the little kid back then. Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. Uh, you guys shattered the glass for me the first time y'all brought up Andy's hygiene routine. I cannot believe <clears throat> the amount of people that don't know how to clean themselves or just avoid it. I have a very sensitive nose and hate being able to smell the B.O. off myself, so I tend to shower when I get up. Sometimes during the day, if it's one of those 110-degree days and before bed, I don't use a towel except for the face. We actually buy a Mexican loofahs called Estropo Bio. I don't know how to pronounce that. You know how to pronounce that? Uh-uh. Uh, Estropeos. I don't know. It's basically a rolled up ball of hay that's coarse enough to wash you, but not enough to cause damage to your skin. We switch them out when they start falling apart about once a week. These people uh, make me want to use a scrub mommy because scrub daddy ain't as gentle as scrub papa ain't around. My dad always reminded me to never leave the house without showering. You never know when you might. You never know when might go down or a last minute party <laughs> might pop off and it's better to be ready for it another uh another way a friend said what if you die suddenly and you don't want people looking at you naked just be ready for the funeral at all times uh, all the time so when it does happen you uh have them know that they can put you in a box put at put you in the box as is as your last wish also there's a tiktok from uh, who is Adiv, uh that features a few people starting their routine, and it's disgusting. Yeah, I'm not going to look at that. Um, I got a few things, though, for this one. But you Somebody look. funny, I forget, some comedian said, man, some of y'all be at the nightclub, y'all go to the bathroom, and y'all just go straight back to dancing. Yeah, yeah I don't leave the house until, uh, first of all, I take a shower before I leave the house, or, uh-huh. the, or the hotel. And uh, the only exception is if, like, you called me and said, hey, you want to go eat right now? And I haven't. Right. I'll go eat. But I come back and I'll take a shower. I can't. I, I have to take a shower before I leave. But before I can take a shower, I have to take a shower. Mm-hmm. So I will wait until that, that moment happens, right. occurs, before I leave the house. But what, the bad news that I want to give you, dude, is I appreciate the email. It's a good email. And I appreciate your... Uh, your, your, uh, your candor. Older, your candor, your older odor control, the things that you want to look out for. But here's the thing. And Eric's <laughs> <laughs> when you die, dude, if you get in an accident, like you said, it's nice that you washed up, but you're still in your pants when you die. Is that like some real? Shit? Yeah, because you uh, you have in you that in you right now, right. and so you know you you're digesting. So whatever's in there, and you completely relax. There's no more tightening. That all that comes out of your body. So if you get in an accident, you're in your pants, man. You got so, so you're not going to be put in the box that way. So do all the things that you want to do. Just know that they still got to clean you up. Damn. Mm. Uh. So when you're out, but yeah, when you're out, you do have to go to the bathroom sometimes and do number two, right? Dude, the whole time I've been with you on the road, I've had to take a. Shit. I've had to take a shit more than once, but I think I've only shit once or twice the whole time we've ever been out. Really? I make sure I go over to the, the course of five years. Yeah, man. Really? I make sure that I go to the bathroom bef- before I take the shower, and then I'm showered and I'm good to go. And then if I have to go, I hold that shit until I get back. Mm. Nah. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like. Shit. I don't like away games. I don't like. Uh, uh, I, I don't like being out with a dirty ass. I know that you you think that 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 towel that towel is disgusting to me, but I, I clean up at home. I have a loofah, but mm. not not that one that he said. But I have the the one that's um, it's it's that it's almost like plasticky stuff that they ball up. You know, it's a ball. It's made out of a like it's like a plastic. I guess I don't know what it is. You know, certain materials I would imagine like a loofah. You know. Must feel good to clean your ass because it scratches it. You don't go all the way up your ass though with it like that. But you put it in between your butt you cheeks. You put it in your butt scrub. cheeks, yeah. Yeah, you just go. Who said up your ass? What are you thinking? You're deep down diving into. Nah, I'm just saying it in well, a Well, when you said you... up your ass, it just. I didn't say it. up your ass. I never said up your ass. <laughs> you said that. Okay. 
<laughs> I yeah. said simply, yeah. the walls of yeah. your inside of your ass. I just don't, you scrub that. Yeah, what that's I don't, gotta feel good. I don't like that rope on there. There's, you know, there's a little rope. You know, when they, the thing I'm talking about, you see them, those little balls are like not plastic, but they're like that like mesh. Scrunchies they're like scrunchy. Yeah, that mesh right. material. Yeah, yeah, but there's that little piece of rope on that. That rope can't touch my butt, man. That has to be. On what are you worried about the rope doing? Because that rope gets. That's what gets germs in that the 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 mesh you can wash that th out that all uh, everything when you wash that that gets clean no nah, i'm throwing that out after one use you throw the the loofah out i would if i use the loofah nah, you don't throw it out after one use really throw it out after a week so, so you wash your ass with the loofah and you keep the loofah you wash the loofah you wash your how, well, how, that you, any, how, how is that any different from washing a rag it's a rag that's why i said the same thing about the the rope the loofah is it doesn't it, it's not porous. It doesn't hold anything in. It doesn't hold germs. You wash that thing off. The rope and your, your towel holds germs. You know you have to throw your towels away. They eventually get moldy too, right? They don't they don't last forever. I don't care if they're still like whole. They don't have any holes in them or anything. They're 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 gross. They get uh they get moldy. You're not gonna turn me against what my wash. No, goes. you you use your wash off all the time. And you, everybody who likes your wa their washcloth, keep your washcloth. Just know you're dirty. Get the <laughs> dirty, here, man. You're dirty. Get the out of here. That's the <laughs> that's it. That's it. We should call this episode. Take that. Take that. Take no, that. That's too easy. No, that's too. No, I think we did one like that. I think we did something like that. I don't think we. I did. think it should be called "You're Dirty." <laughs> dirty. It's called oh. dirty. Because it doesn't make a difference. Either you're dirty or I'm dirty. One of us is dirty. Well, ain't nobody dirty over here. All right. Dirty ass, gross towel. And you cocksucker see, I got the same shirt, but in white now. <laughs> I don't know why you morons think that I only have one shirt. I have a thousand of them shirts. I'm like, I'm like Paulie Gautieri. Dude, I when know. When he wear those white shoes. Remember that episode when him and Tony was going on a trip and they show him packing and he had like 50 pair of the same white shoes? Yeah. I got like 50 of these, 50 million of these. Shirts. I'm gonna tell you the truth. He pisses me off with these black shirts because Why? he just he he throws he gets rid of them afterwards. They're loofahs to me. <laughs> and he and then and then I have to get him more shirts all the time, dude. He has he has one every like every day. Uh, anyway, let's let's do the. They the feel dancing. comfortable. They feel. Good. I know they're brand new. They do feel the best. Man. But wash that. Shit. They're good for a few washes. October 25th through the 27th, we're going to be at the uh, Tampa, Florida Improv. October 31st through uh, November 3rd, we're at the Chicago Improv. November 8th, we're going to be at the Hawaii Theater in Honolulu. November 15th through the 17th, we're at Levity Live in West Nyack, New York. November 21st through the 24th, we're at the or Ontario, California Improv. Uh, November 29th, we're at Texas Trust CU Theater in Grand Prairie, Texas. December 13th through the 15th, we're at the Raleigh Improv in Cary. December 19th through the 22nd, we're at the Helium uh, Comedy Club in Philadelphia. And December 27th, we're at Pikes Peak Center for the Performing Arts in Colorado Springs. Followed by December 28th, the Paramount in Denver, Colorado. Those are the dates. That's the show. We gots to go. Fashow. Spears and Thanks for listening to the Spears and Steinberg podcast. For more information on where to find us on the internet, visit SpearsbergPod.com.